Poyo Poyo, previously marketed under the name of Poyo Pop in Europe and North America, is a series of puzzle matching games created by Compile. Sega has owned the franchise since 1998, with most of the releases after 2001 being developed by Sonic Team. Poyo Poyo was created as a spin-off franchise to Mado Monogatari, a series of first-person dungeon crawler RPGs by Compile. The characters from Poyo Poyo originated from Mado Monogatari. The first Poyo Poyo game was developed by Compile and released in 1991 for the MSX2 and Family Computer Disk System. The Poyo Blobs used within the game were Mado Monogatari's equivalent of the slime monsters from Dragon Quest game series. Compile and Sega collaborated to create an arcade version of Poyo Poyo that released in October 1992. So first up, let's take a look at the Mega Drive port, which is pretty much the same as the arcade. This is no surprise as the arcade hardware is Sega's system C2 hardware, which is based upon the Mega Drive with a few differences to make them incompatible. So while this Mega Drive version looks like it's Arcade Big Brother, I'd say this does sound better. The Arcade original was rather tinny, this Mega Drive port is much fuller in sound. Sadly, some of the voices are missing in the Mega Drive port, probably due to ROM storage size. Still, despite this, the Mega Drive port of the game was a bestseller in Japan. Published by Banpresto, this Super Famicom port is my favourite for audio out of all the non-CD based releases. The music sounds so good with a nice stereo separation. Unfortunately, this is not the best port to play. It tends to suffer from slowdown at times, which can throw you off your game if you aren't accustomed to it. Still, this is the version I grew up playing to be honest, so I still have a soft spot in my heart for it. Poyo Poyo for the Famicom Disk System was actually published by Tokuma Shoten as a pack-in for the Famimaga magazine. The game is a bare bones version of Poyo Poyo but does support two player mode and a nice extra where Carbuncle, the yellow creature thing, can appear to join loose Poyos together. In 1993, the original 1991 Famicom Disk System version of Poyo Poyo was released on cartridge for the Famicom in Japan. It's identical to the original disc release, apart from having no loading times and a newly designed title screen.
fairly reasonable port of Puyo Puyo, but missing the level of animation found in the Mega Drive and Super Famicom versions seen earlier. Some may also be put off by the limited colour palette used within the game, but it's not bad for the NEC PC 9801. The X68000 port is practically arcade perfect, it even has the arcade's opening demo. The only noticeable difference is a slight change in some instruments used for the music. Sadly, the X68000 port does suffer from sprite flicker, or so it would seem. The footage you're seeing here is emulated, although I did test it on two different emulators with both showing sprite flicker. I'll be interested in knowing if the real X68000 hardware suffers from Sprite Flicker. FM Towns is a fairly powerful system, so it pains me to see CRI's half hours port of Puyo Puyo to the system. Everything about this port is rough. From the awful animation of the Puyo landing on Ariel at the beginning, to the lack of how to play screen, to the poor animation and jerky scrolling. Even the arranged soundtrack is awful. Not a good port by any standards. Featuring a mixture of CD audio and chip music, this PC Engine CD port is fairly nice in the audio department. It also looks good, however those of you with sharp eyes may have noticed that the Poyo have no shadows, unlike on the arcade and many other ports. Seems strange that NEC Avenue would omit such a simple effect. This is a nice surprise. The Game Gear port features some really nice stereo sound and great use of colour. Best of all, it plays a great game of Puyo Puyo. Sure, the main Puyo are kind of basic looking, but you can tell what they're meant to be. This is a very nice way to play Puyo Puyo on the move.
Based upon the Game Gear port, this Game Boy port is also fairly respectable. However, it does have one major difference. As you know, the Game Boy is monochrome and Puyo Puyo's gameplay relies on pairing different coloured Puyo blobs. Not in the Game Boy port. Now each Puyo has a slightly different look to them as well as there being two different colour shades. Playing this port for the first time is a real struggle, but the more you play, the easier it becomes. Unlike most of the ports of Puyo Puyo, the MSX2 version is based upon the original Famicom game, rather than the Sega Arcade version. This means it's lacking the story modes, characters and many of the music tracks. Still, for what it is, we can enjoy a game of Puyo Puyo. Now this is a surprise, Puyo Puyo actually got a release on the Nokia Engage. Who would have thought? While it's missing the music and intros of the original, it is based upon it. Playability wise, well, it's a little awkward due to the Engage button layout, but it's better than you'd expect. Other unexpected features are the inclusion of a 2 player mode via Bluetooth and the pure puzzle mode. The Windows 3.1 release is pretty much the same as the NEC PC 9801, but with slightly better audio. Again, this Macintosh version is based upon the same port that appears on the NEC PC 9801 and Windows 3.1. Sadly, this port features really scratchy audio. What is interesting is that this port was published by Quest. There are many different versions of Puyo Puyo for mobile phones in Japan. However, they're really tough to find these days. But I was able to find a version developed for phones outside of Japan. This 2005 release by Sega is pretty basic, but at least it's somewhat playable. The problem I found was that the control system is too sensitive, making fan adjustments almost impossible. And 
let's take a look at all those versions of Puyo Puyo running side by side. <laughs> 